So with all the gear added up that I have been using for Ironman training, the total cost comes out to All right, good morning and welcome back to another week of training. And this week's video, well throughout the video this week, I wanted to really kind of just chat about all the equipment I'm currently using for Ironman training and how much it costs because that is one thing that people don't talk about a lot. And I think it's important, especially if you are thinking about doing an Ironman anytime soon. Now, when it comes to all this equipment though, just keep in mind, I did not drop all my money on it up front. I've kind of acquired this stuff over the past year because I, if you've watched any of the past videos, you know last year I trained for my first half Ironman. This year is my first full Ironman. It can be overwhelming at first when you first get into it thinking like, oh my God, I got to spend so much money. But just keep in mind, like you don't have to get everything at one time. Just slowly get it over time. So I just had my longest swim I've ever done of training so far. It was right under 3,500 yards total. It was 3,480. But now I'm walking home. Once I get home, I will shower, get ready for work, and then I'll discuss kind of the gear I'm using for swimming. Okay, so I just got home. I haven't showered yet. I smell like chlorine, which is kind of gross, but my girlfriend's not here right now, so she doesn't have to deal with it, and you can't smell me, obviously. So I figured I'd just go ahead and film this part and talk about, obviously, all of the swimming gear that I have and how much it costs to get it. Again, you don't have to get all this stuff up front. It's just stuff you can kind of get over time. Really, all you need at first is like the swimming cap and goggles, and you're good to go for the swim. But let's start with the wetsuit. This is what I will be wearing during the race. I wore it during my first half hour. Iron Man. This is the Xterra wetsuit. My sweet girlfriend got it for me for my birthday last year for my first half Iron Man. So I'm very thankful that I didn't have to personally pay for this because they go for, this one costs $350. Wetsuits can be kind of expensive, honestly. But right now, actually, Xterra is having a sale on their website as we speak. Uh, and you can buy one for $159 at the time of me recording this video. So make sure you go to their website and get one if you are needing a wetsuit. And I just want to start by saying I'm not sponsored by any of these products. I don't have any affiliate links to these products or anything. Um, I mean, I wish I did, but really it's just to help you guys out if there's something that you're looking to buy. So highly recommend going to get one of those if you still need a wetsuit. The next thing I have that I've been using for training, and I actually got this at the beginning of full Ironman training, I didn't have it last year, was the Xterra wetsuit shorts. Now I love these shorts. They're the lava pants is what they're called, just because my legs like to sink when I am swimming. So I wear these every swimming workout just to help with the buoyancy of my legs to make sure I'm swimming the right form. These typically cost $150 on Xterra's website, but I guess Xterra is having a pretty large sale right now. So right now they're actually going for $65. So highly recommend these. These have completely changed my swimming workout, especially in the pool. Cause obviously I'm not going to get in the pool with my full wetsuit on. I look a little ridiculous and probably get made fun of. I mean, I probably already do get made fun of, but that would be even worse. The next thing I have that I use, obviously goggles. These are speedo goggles. Honestly, we went to Mallorca last summer and I needed goggles to swim. So I bought these at a random store. They're like $25, but you can find a, a pretty cheap, good pair of goggles. I mean, Speedo has been great so far. They're comfortable. I've been using these for probably about eight months now and I really like them and I'll probably keep wearing them. And I'll probably wear them from the race as well. Again, those were really cheap. What goggles I really want though, and this is where like things eventually just get expensive over time. And there's always something else that you might want. I really want the form swim goggles. They're like the high tech ones that tell you your pace in the goggles that display like a little screen while you're swimming. It helps with your form, so on and so forth. So I really want a pair of those. So if anyone from form is watching this video right now and you would like me to review the product and you want to send it to me for free, I'd love that. Just wink, wink. Other than that, I have the swim cap, of course. You can buy this on Amazon for like a dollar or two. This was free to me because I got this at my race. I mean, I guess it wasn't free. I paid like, how much is it? 400 something dollars for that half Ironman last year. So this is a 400 and something dollar swim cap. So I've been using this to train in. Plus it, it makes people realize, look, I've done a half Ironman. I know, I'm an athlete. Other than that, an add-on that I recently got were the Shox Open Swim headphones. These things have been an absolute game changer for my swims because if you've watched my previous videos, especially earlier on in training, I talked about how bored I get when I go swimming, especially in a pool, just back and forth. And for my longer swims, like today, I really just want to listen to music and have something to go to. Obviously, during the race, I'm not going to have music, but you're in the zone for the race. You're not really needing music 
music for that. But these are perfect. They fit right around your ears like this. I don't know if you can see them, but they're bone condensing or I think that's how, how they, they say it. But then the cap goes on and it sounds perfect underwater. It sounds like surround sound. So love these. These are, I think, $159 or so, $149. So that's really all my swimming equipment. I mean, when it comes to other stuff like buoys, that's all at the gym. So I just use that for free, I guess you could say. I mean, I pay for my gym membership, but that's really all the swim equipment. So again, this is stuff that you can slowly just kind of get over time. You don't need it all at once. Swimming and running, as you will see, is the cheapest part of all of this. So now that you've seen the swim stuff, what I will do is I will try to keep a running tally throughout this video and at the end, just show the total cost of how much it's cost me so far. And again, keep in mind, I'm gonna keep stressing this because I don't want people to get overwhelmed, but this is stuff that I have slowly acquired over the past year. I didn't buy it all up front. The most important part of all this is gonna be this bad boy, which I'll get to tomorrow. Top of the morning, guys. If you've been watching my videos, you know, Barry and I, we got a puppy. Uh, it's been about two months now. Look how big he is getting. I can like barely hold him. Shay, are you getting so big? It's so early for you, I know. But he, he's almost 20 pounds, which is kind of crazy. We got him when he was 11 pounds and you're not stopping anytime soon, are you? Are you? Are you, you don't have time for me this morning. He's like, will you put me down so I can go back to sleep? I gotta get on the bike. All right, time to get this bad boy started, Lucky. All right, so I just got on the bike and Lucky is trying to eat my pedals. You better watch out, you're gonna get hurt down there, buddy boy. But this morning I have a Threshold Efforts bike. It's 52 minutes. Looks like there's actually a lot of intervals or maybe I'm reading this wrong. And then I'm gonna do a small run off the bike. So 20 minutes, so technically today is a brick workout. Just getting started. I'll screenshot what the workout is gonna be today and put it up on the screen. But it doesn't look too crazy. I'm, I say that and then I'm probably gonna wanna pass out at the end. But I'll be honest, I was bad last Last night, I didn't do my first full body workout of the week, which I normally do on Tuesday evenings. So I'm gonna do that this evening. I kind of talked about it last week, but sometimes you just gotta be flexible, you know? Like he's jumping at my tire. He's like, what? What's that? But so what I'm gonna do is I'll do the speed workout and then I'll do the run off the bike. And then after that, I will discuss how much everything costs when it comes to the cycling portion of doing an Ironman. <laughs> Just finished the first hard round, which was 20 sets, and I got the full star on it, so that means I hit all the watts. There's proof. Now I have a two minute rest period at 135 watts, and then jumping into one more hard round, which is 15 sets. It's like 50 seconds at 195 watts, and then 10 seconds at 250. So this is gonna be fun. Wish me luck. My support crew. All right, I just finished the main sets, and now I'm in a five minute cool down. I way underestimated how hard that would be, but I got the full star on that last hard round. Now I just gotta make it through this five minute cool down, put my running shoes on, and then we're out the door for a 20 minute run. God, that actually sucked. Hopefully the cool air feels nice outside. Cause I have the window open, a fan on. I'm still sweating my ass off right now. It is 32 degrees outside, and I'll be honest, I have never felt happier <laughs> about that. Oh, this feels refreshing after that bike ride, and it feels good to shake out these legs a little bit. But I'm five minutes in, so have 15 minutes to go. Nice, easy run off the bike, and that's it for the day, besides the afternoon workout this evening. So I'll see you guys back at home, and we'll talk about the price for the bike. Hello! <laughs> that was funny. I wasn't expecting to see Barry on the run. I didn't know she'd be running over here, but she just started training for a half marathon. And I guess she got too hot and took her jacket off. So she was like, oh, since you're running shorter, will you carry my jacket home? So I got stuck with it, but hopefully it earns me some brownie points for being a good boyfriend. <sighs> Five more minutes, almost done. All right, just finished the run. 20 minutes, 2.28 miles. And my average pace is 8.50. That's pretty good. Good run, good workout. 
Okay, so I'm back home. I actually showered this time so I don't smell like shit <laughs> because after that workout, I will say there's a little bit of that smell going around. But let's talk about the most expensive part of Ironman training. Now, like I said, you could technically start Ironman training if you have a bike at the gym that you wanna use, but if you really wanna take it serious, I highly recommend obviously getting a bike. I mean, obviously you could find one online at a local bike shop. Sometimes you can go on like Facebook Marketplace and find some good used bikes. But I actually bought this one brand new got it right before i did my first half ironman last year so i'm coming up on a year with it and this is the contend ar by giant it's actually a great bike i've loved using it it's definitely more of a beginner bike i guess you could say but i got this bike for right around 1350 total so that was before it was actually put together uh, the bike fit and everything else but luckily the bike shop that i bought it from they put it together for me which was really nice and they helped do my bike fit for free which was also a great great add-on. I think Giant, when I looked online, they're actually having a sale right now where you could get it a discount. I don't know how much off, but I'll put the link in the description so you can go check that out if you are obviously in the market for a bike right now. So this was hands down the most expensive purchase of all of training whether it's swimming, biking, and running, this was the most expensive part. And this was actually cheap compared to what you can get. I wanted to start on the cheaper end because I didn't know how long I would be doing this. But now obviously the more I've been doing this, the more I'm like, okay, well now I think I might want to upgrade my bike eventually, but it does the job for now. The other expensive part of training, at least currently, because it's really cold outside, is that I've had to do a lot of indoor training. So with that being said, I have the Zwift Hub One Indoor Trainer. And what's great is it has virtual shifting so this cost me $5.99, but luckily on Zwift, they have a payment plan option where it's 0% financing. So I did the payment plan option just so I didn't have to drop that much cash up front. And since there was no interest on it. So that's what I have been doing for that. And it's been great. I'm happy I went that route instead of dropping $600 out the gate. So highly recommend doing that if you really need to get an indoor trainer, or obviously you could go use the one at the gym, but I really wanted to be accurate with my workouts. And what's great is this connects to Zwift online, which obviously if you are familiar with Zwift, you know it's just like an online racing community where you can do live races, it connects to your training plans and can help you follow your training routes and everything like that. So that has been great. So highly recommend this. I know a lot of people also do the Wahoo Kicker. I've never used Wahoo, but I've heard great things about that as well. So next up, let's talk about the gear itself. For the helmet, this is obviously a must have. This is the Gyro Agilis helmet. I got this at the bike shop. It was a hundred dollars and I was actually so shocked with how much a cycling helmet can cost you. I was expecting maybe fifty dollars if that. This is actually one of the cheaper ones. It can get a lot more expensive than a hundred dollars for a helmet which is kind of crazy but I went with the white one because it's easy to see on the road. Originally I was like oh I like the black but the guy at the bike shop was like we try to recommend not getting the black one just because it's hard for drivers and people to see black so white stands out so that's what I got that. And then for the cycling shoes I got the giant cycling shoes. They're not giant shoes, they're just the giant brand. But I actually couldn't find these on the website when I just looked. I got these at the bike shop, so maybe they don't make them anymore. Honestly, I would like to upgrade these eventually, but these were $100 as well. They're basic Velcro ones. They get the job done, but they're not pretty. Sometimes people like the pretty cycling shoes. Next up is my cycling bib. I really should have thought about this before I filmed this because this thing is soaking wet from this morning's workout and it smells like ass right now. I really need to wash it. Sorry, that may have been a little TMI. This has been great. I just got this a couple of months ago, actually. I think it was originally $90, but I got it on sale for right under $55. I think the sale is actually still going on. So I highly recommend going to check that out. Again, the link is in the description. And no, I'm not sponsored by any of this stuff. I'm just hoping to help you guys out. This has been great. I think it's like half an inch for the padding. The padding is great on it. I use it like once or twice before I wash it, which is a little gross probably, but I haven't bought another one yet. I should buy another one while they're still on sale. And then last but not least are my glasses. These are glasses that I got on Amazon. They're Rock Bros. They're actually kind of cool. I feel cool when I wear them. These are cheap. They're like $30, if that. So highly recommend obviously getting a pair of these. I don't wear these inside, obviously. I wear these outside on my outdoor runs, but not runs, rides. I actually wear them when I'm running too though. But yeah, these are cheap. They're like $30. You can obviously spend a lot more money on these and spend up to like $100 to $200 on like Roka shades, which are cool. Eventually I probably will end up getting a pair, but just starting out, I don't think you need anything too fancy. Just get you a cheap pair that does a job. But I like these a lot. They feel nice. They don't bother me when I'm 
wearing them. So that's super important, obviously, when you have to wear them for hours on end. But that's really about it for the bike. Again, there's a lot more things that I eventually want to get, which would cost a lot more money. Eventually, I would like to upgrade the bike. So if there's any other bike people out there, bike companies watching this, maybe someone like Canyon. I wouldn't mind testing out a bike if you guys want to maybe sponsor me or something. But I also want to get aero bars. That's probably my next purchase for the bike. I really want to have them by the time I do Lake Placid. But again, it's all money. With cycling, I feel like you can just continually find things to spend money on. And it's hands down the most expensive part of all this. So... I just need to sit down for a minute. Oh, there I am. A lot of people have asked like what I film these videos on. So as you can see, it's my iPhone. I'm actually getting an upgrade. Uh, not on the iPhone, but a camera. Just a small compact camera that I'm gonna try out soon. So I'm excited to test that out. But man, these speed workouts have really like been kicking my ass the past three weeks since I updated my thresholds. I don't think they're gonna get easier. I was kind of hoping they would, but I don't think they will. I figured I'd go ahead and just talk about my running gear that I'm using while training. Really obviously starts off with the shoes. That's what's great about running is you really don't need much. All you really need is shoes to get out the door and start running. But I am wearing the Hoka Mach X. I got lucky because Barry's parents actually bought these for me over Thanksgiving this past year. But normally they're gonna run you about $180. I love these Hoka's, I highly recommend them. I used to have a different pair of Hoka's, but I don't even remember, I think they were the Carbon X's, but I like these much more. There's so much more cushion. And I feel like there's more support. So that's the shoes. I will probably wear these obviously for the race itself too, since I've been training in them but I might need a new pair by the time race day gets here because you're really only supposed to put, I think, 300 miles on shoes before you get new ones because they start wearing down. Other than the shoes, I wear the, the Garmin 255. That's what I use to track all my workouts on my run. Uh, I, I track it, honestly, during the swim too. And I use it for the bike, but the main purpose of that is obviously to watch your pace and then to keep up with my heart rate. Because a lot of the training that I do, I need to be in zone two. This is the watch I've been using. I think it was 329. I got it on Amazon. So it got here in like three days, which was great. But I had the, the 935 prior to this, but it wouldn't Bluetooth connect the heart rate to Zwift. And I do a lot of training on Zwift, so that was super important to me. So I highly recommend a Garmin watch, but you could obviously use any watch you want. Like my girlfriend, she uses her Apple watch. I know a lot of people like Apple. It really comes down to what you prefer. But that's really it for all the running gear. That's what's so great about running. You don't need much. Good morning. I am currently an hour and 17 minutes into my second brick workout of the week and the longest workout of the week. This brick workout, it's three hours and 40 minutes on the bike and then a 30 minute run off the bike. So really the goal for this long ride is to get as much elevation as possible to really get these legs feeling heavy before the run. So far I've climbed almost 2000 feet. Will be interesting to see what I get at the end, but now back to all the training gear. I've basically shown you everything that I've been using for training leading up to my Ironman race. So with all the gear added up that I have been using for Ironman training, the total cost comes out to $3,417. It can get expensive. It's definitely not a cheap sport by any means. That's one thing that I'm learning over time. But if it's something you love, and you feel like you're gonna do it for a few years or for the foreseeable future, I personally think it's an investment that is worth it, not only for your physical health, but your mental health as well. Anyways, gonna crank out the rest of this long ride, and then we gotta get out there on that 30 minute run. <sighs> All right, ride complete. It was three hours and 40 minutes. I did a little over 4,700 feet of elevation, and my legs are killing me. 
Two other things I didn't mention when it comes to the cost of doing an Ironman is obviously nutrition, and then second, the cost of the race. The race will vary race to race, and for this one, I'm actually raising funds through the Ironman Foundation, which supports the local communities where the race is held. So thank you to everyone who has donated so far. It really means a lot. And if you would like to donate, the link is in the description. Every dollar counts, and it would mean the world to me. Look who's going on a run with me. Unfortunately, you can't yet, Lucky. He doesn't even have time for me. So it was supposed to be a 30 minute run, but Barry talked me into doing 50 minutes. But it was right under five miles, slower pace, but good run overall. She might hate me for saying slower pace, but it's okay. Now the longest workout of the week is done. Thank God it was four and a half hours total. So needless to say, I'm hurting. So I just have one more workout for the week. It's tomorrow, which is Sunday. It's going to be an hour and 50 minute run. Now I'm supposed to be running the New York City Half Marathon in about three weeks or so. I don't know, it is March 17th, I think. And my goal for that half marathon is an hour and 50 minutes. I've never ran one that fast, so we'll see if I make it, but tomorrow would be a good test to see where I'm at since it's supposed to be an hour and 50 minute run. Now I'm not gonna film it, uh, and I'm actually gonna end the video here. So once that run is done though, I'll put the final stats here for what that run ended up being. And then I'll also put up the stats for the full week of training. And yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching this one. I hope seeing some of this gear and how much it costs help you guys out. And hopefully you're able to get some good deals on some stuff. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys next week for another week of training.